Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a vehicle that was created in Automation, the car company Tycoon game, and then exported into Beam and G Drive. As of right now, it does not have a name. It's simply called Model 1 Trim 1, and I made a video where I designed this vehicle from the ground up in Automation, and I highly suggest you watch that video prior to watching this one, because that way you get a good idea of what the design intentions were for this vehicle. First thing I want to do is see how this thing drives, and before we can really see how it drives, we got to turn electronic stability control off. And we're going to be testing this thing on the automation test track, which is the track that was originally designed for automation in the car company Tycoon game. And the developers of Beam and G Drive took that track and made it in Beam and G, which isn't that easy considering, as far as I know, the one in automation is literally a 2D overview, and then they made it a whole 3D track. It's not that long of a track, a lap will only take between probably two and two and a half minutes depending on how fast the car is. With this one, it has a lot of power, but I do not like the way it's handling so far, so I would guess this thing's going to be more in the 220 range probably. It just feels very unstable as I go around the corners, like you notice sometimes it kind of just jiggles back and forth and I feel like I'm going to lose it. So far I haven't, but whenever that happens, I get a little concerned, I slow down more than probably necessary. So next time it jiggles, I just got to power through it probably and I'll be all okay. And I think through this corner, we can go through it flat out. 155 miles per hour. And yeah, we can go straight through it like that. This is the jiggle. Oh, that's jiggling too much. I tried to go flat out. Like I said, that did not work. <laughs> it might have been because we were going 150 miles per hour as we did that. Or it might just be because the jiggles are bad. Either way, I better not spin out again because that's just embarrassing if I spin out multiple times in one lap. Why was I off the course right there? Well, that's because this is a crossover. And with a crossover, you get off-road confidence. Notice I said confidence, not capabilities necessarily. All that really gives you is just a little bit of extra ground clearance over a comparable hatchback or sedan. And one thing I didn't mention that's kind of funny is the fact that we're doing a crossover between automation and BMG Drive while driving a crossover that's one of those things i should have mentioned in the automation video but that's just hilariously coincidental because i really chose a crossover because there aren't any crossovers in beam and g drive by default so overall though this thing accelerates very well it's handling it's pretty understeery which regular vehicles for regular people are and it likes to bounce around the corners a lot which really disrupts its handling capabilities if i could keep this thing Less bouncy, I'm sure it would handle a lot better. So now how about we use the full crossover capabilities in this corner where we just plow through the dirt like that. That'll save us a ton of time. Although it would also get us the disqualification in any sort of real race. But I wonder if this thing drives bad because I was trying to compromise based on what automation was telling me instead of just giving it a sporty suspension setup that would work good. Like it's just trying to do too much at once maybe. Anyways, crash into wall. Upside down, making it a little bit more difficult than necessary to look at this thing. So we're going to go ahead and get it upright and kind of see the node structure there. It's not super detailed, but it works good enough in crashes. It's never going to be as nice as like a handmade car, it seems like. But it's better than some mods I've seen. You see the side over there, that looks all right. You have lights flashing on the rear when you get in the crash. Nice little feature right there. And uh, yeah, we can kind of take a look at the underside there so you can see the damage in a little bit more detail. And then we'll go ahead and reset it. Let's go ahead and go over what an exported vehicle has and doesn't have. First off, it has a very good looking version of the vehicle you just made in automation. It looks virtually identical as far as I could tell, although I did not notice the fact that we had extra mirrors down there at the bottom of the vehicle. We can tear those off. Unfortunately, the part selector is pretty minimal. You have things like the stability control, fuel tank, engine, transmission, turbocharger, and then wheels which has the suspension and all that kind of stuff. But you don't have any other options on these or anything because there's only one that was exported. If you really wanted more options though, what you can do, it sounds like, is you could go ahead and modify this thing by hand, like if you were making a mod from the ground up to add other options to it to make it a lot more in depth than just the exported vehicle. As for the tuning menu, again, pretty minimal. We have the fuel volume and front and rear tire pressure. Color works perfectly though. You can make it whatever color you want. There's even a couple of presets already, so we can have it the blue color, white, whatever you want. Doesn't matter. Now, there is no interior on this thing. If you actually go to the inside, you'll see it's just the frame of the vehicle, basically. But there is a really nice engine model. This is the same engine model you see in automation. 
The only unfortunate thing is, is you almost never get to see it because in the vehicles that I've tried, the hood is perfectly mounted and there's no way to pop the hood open to actually see it. So the only way you'll see it is if you stick your head inside of the vehicle like this or look at it from down below. You also have the suspension all modeled up and you'll notice it does move, move exactly how you'd expect a suspension to move while driving. But that's kind of hard to demonstrate. So I think it's a little bit easier if I just go ahead and mess with the gravity. So if we increase the gravity, you see how the suspension goes up and down. You can see all the individual parts flexing and moving just as you'd expect them to. And it looks real nice with the double wishbone su setup. That's the only one I've tested. I don't know if the other ones work a little bit differently or not, but we can also take a look at the rear and you can see how the rear works. And you'll notice the springs compress and decompress as we increase and decrease the gravity. And it looks really nice as we do that. And we're going to put it back to earth gravity. And then we'll go ahead and uh, look at the front here. The lights do not work at this time. But it sounds like it's planned in the future for them to work. And you already have the rear tail lights working. So it is definitely possible for them to implement that as far as I'm concerned. If they got the tail lights working, it should be possible to do the headlights, I would assume. In terms of parts that can come off of the vehicle, we got the mirrors, which you've already seen me tearing off before. And we also got the wheels, which can come off an impact. Or you could just tear off like that. And the wheels bounce around just like every other wheel does when they fall off of the vehicle. It'll be interesting to see how difficult it would be to add the wheels from BMG Drive onto one of the exported vehicles because that'd be a nice little feature to have the wheel options there. Unfortunately, none of the doors are hinged or anything like that. So they are always attached just like the hood. And those are the only parts that can actually come off. So we can go ahead and just reset this thing. And it does have custom engine sounds that are exported from automation. So I'm going to go ahead and let you listen to those real quickly. That should give you a good idea of what the engine sounds like. Now, let's test this thing off-roading. On paper, this is a vehicle with a lot of ground clearance, all-wheel drive, and a lot of power. It's basically a rally car, except it has a really high center of gravity, and it's threatening to tip over a lot more frequently than I would like. Like, when we first entered the course, I thought I was going to tip. On, like, the second corner, I thought I was going to tip. We got to be a little bit more careful with this thing to make sure it doesn't accidentally tip over. That means we gotta go a little slower through the corners. Feels like as long as we do that, we're gonna be fine. Oh, getting up on the corner a little bit. It's pretty bouncy here still, but not as bad as I was expecting. I was expecting driving on something like this, the second the vehicle got disrupted, like right there, it would be instant spin out, but looks like we can control it good enough. Like I am a little bit all over the place. But I'm staying on the course. That's the important part. Even if it's only just barely, we are on the course. And we have almost completed a lap of this place. And once we do that, we'll go back off of it. So we entered it right around here. So that is a lap. And now let's go ahead and do a little bit of a jump up here. See what that does to the car. All right, going to get a little bit of a roll going. Can we land upright? Yes, we can. Can it still drive? That's the real question. Now, looking at the damage, I don't see any reason why not. It's not that badly damaged. And it is driving perfectly fine, but we're going to crash it some more. And now it is stuck. We'll go ahead and take a look at that front damage. Bash that in pretty good. Over onto the back. Not that much damage except for the fact that we're missing a wheel. Anyhow, we'll reset this. And I want to try to roll this thing. This should be... Very easy with the high center of gravity and bumps all over the place and dirt. Yep. Just like that, we've rolled it. And now we have bouncing all over the place. New question is, will we land up right again? Answer is, once again, yes, we will. Pretty beat up on that side. 
This side looks a little bit better, though. Not that much damage on that side. How's it drive? Uh, not that well. It's driving crooked, and it's kind of bouncing between the rear left and the front right wheels, so I don't really have much control over this. We're just going to go ahead and wreck it once more right into this wall. And maybe it'll still keep driving, actually, after that. Yeah, I don't see that much damage from the impact. Let's see. It's driving pretty much the same as before, so I guess we skid too much to really damage it a lot. How about we do another roll? We got a really good spot to roll it up here. I know, because in testing earlier on, I accidentally rolled it here twice in a row. Nice, easy roll. Although, it's a little bit hard to see the outcome because there's that tree surrounding it. Let's go ahead and see if we can pull it out from the tree so we can get a better look at this. Oh, no, it is stuck in that tree. And I've kind of messed it up anyways with pulling it that hard. So instead of saving it, we'll just take a quick look at what we can see. And then we'll go ahead and reset this thing. And I want to do something a little bit different. So let's spawn up another one of these guys. And we're going to get it in blue. And actually what we could do is we could get it in red, white, and blue. Because this is an American car company. So we got our cars in red, white, and blue. When did they become an American car company? Just now. And it was never planned. It's just that makes sense to me to have red, white, and blue. It's going to be an American car company. Anyways, there are the colors. Now we're going to have some fun with them. I'm going to put this one sideways. I'm going to park the blue one in front of this one. And then that way, when I crash into it, I do damage to three versions of the vehicle in three different spots. The white one will be damaged in the front, the red one in the middle, and then the blue one in the rear. That's the plan. Let's see if it works. Well, before we can do that, we got to get this thing up to speed. So we'll just do a little 180 right there. And the automatic transmission, no matter what kind you always have, it always slows you down a little bit when you do those 180s. Like if I had a manual, I could whip it in the first gear and keep on going with lots of momentum. Kind of like I did right there. Because I never had to switch from reverse to forward. I was in forward the whole way. Anyhow, we're going to use a lot of slow-mo here. We're going to go all the way down to 100 times slow-mo. And we'll look at the red car for the best camera angle right here. And we can see the impact of the white car into the red car. Absolutely destroying the side of that vehicle. And now the red car hitting the blue car. Got to get from about this angle, it looks like. Not too much damage on the blue car. Not too much damage on the right side of the red car. Well, actually, it's the left side. But when we're looking at it from here, it's the right side. Wow, we really did cave in the right side of the vehicle. We're going to call it the correct ones. So the right side is really caved in. And yet, it still drives with only three wheels. I don't know exactly how it manages that, but it does. Left side, though, that looks almost flawless. How about the blue car? Got some good damage back there. Only on one side, though. The right side isn't too badly damaged at all. And it drives. It feels like it's driving pretty much perfectly. I don't feel any serious pull in either direction. So let's go ahead and do another crash in the blue car to try to wreck it more. The white car here, the engine still works, but it will not move. So I'm going to teleport it back to where we were before. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get a fresh version of the blue car just to slam into the rear of it to hopefully do a bunch more damage than you're seeing right there. You got to get this red car out the way. We'll just put it right next to the wall. That shouldn't be in the way. And we should be able to hit this thing again about 100 miles per hour. I want to make sure the parking brake's on there real quickly. And somehow it didn't crash while I wasn't even driving the vehicle. So a little bit over 100 miles per hour. We'll use some slow-mo here. And that's a nice impact right into the rear of that thing. Go ahead and take a look at the damage. So we got it pretty bashed in right there. How does it drive? It's kind of bouncing in the rear, but it still feels like it's driving surprisingly straight. So I think this thing wants a round two. We're just going to leave it right where it was and charge at it again with the white one. Gonna be going even faster than last time because it's a little bit farther away. This thing's gonna be like 110 miles per hour. Maybe even 120-ish. That was a full speed impact. We'll go ahead and move the white one out of the way once again. And then how's the blue one look? Oh, it's bashed in even more now. Before it's kind of flat, straight up and down. Now it's pushed in. And yet it still is somehow driving. That's impressive. Let's see. If it can do another round. It's got to line it up correctly. Right there. Looks pretty good. And now time for another acceleration. This thing actually moves pretty good. It gets up to 100 miles per hour in no time at all. Like boom there's 100. Boom there's the impact. And now does the blue car still drive after that? Let's find out. Yes it does. Although the damage doesn't look that much different. It is pushed in a little bit more. 
But I think it's kind of like as damaged as I can get hitting it from this angle and position unless I just keep doing it over and over and over again. But we'll try one more to make sure nothing interesting happens real quickly. Everything I do with this car is real quickly, except go around the corners. Although tipping on the corners, that happens real quickly. All right, get that out of the way. And yeah, it's not getting any more damage. So let's destroy it. We're going to get the bus with the rockets and we're going to smash that car. Hopefully between the bus and the wall for maximum destruction. This is looking pretty good. 150 miles per hour. Nice. Like you see that blue spot right there? That's the car. And that's what's left of it. That's how you ruin a car. That thing's not driving at all. The engine is dead. It's destroyed. And now we're going to destroy this car in a completely different way. We're going to use the old cannon and we're going to shoot it into the side of the car because I feel like I got a good idea of how the front and the rear of the vehicle deforms, but not the sides. So we're going to line it up right in front of the cannon. I want it to be a little bit more 90 degree angle like that. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go to the cannon, get some slow-mo going and get a good camera angle right about there. And then let's go ahead and shoot it. And oh, the camera's freaking out. Got it back in time. And impact. That is a really hard impact. And oh my goodness, it's actually gonna hit it hard enough where it might roll over. Look at that. It's gonna roll over and hit it so hard. That is kind of expected <laughs> because this is a crossover, high center of gravity. I've been saying it all video. High center of gravity is going to make it easier to roll over, and a cannonball hitting it like that can roll over even some vehicles with a lower center of gravity. So get this thing back onto its wheels so you get a better idea of what it looks like. That whole side is caved in. My question though is, how well is it going to drive after that? And the answer is, it is pulling hard to the left. How about we try to just clip this bus a little bit? Oh, that really was just a little bit. It was just enough to tear off my tire and immobilize the vehicle by doing so. That was a pretty good impact on the bus. Although I'm kind of curious, how strong is this compared to the bus? Like if I got this thing and just slammed it right into the bus, like we're doing right here, it's going to be going about 100 miles per hour. How much damage will it do to the bus? How much damage will it do to the car? Let's see. I expect the bus to hold up a lot better than this car, right? Actually, surprisingly... It did some good damage to the bus. I, I did not expect it to get that damaged from the impact. And this car, it's still in pretty good condition, which makes me a little bit more curious then about something else. If we crash this into a regular car, what will that look like? So we're going to go ahead and replace the bus with just the ETK 800 series. It really doesn't matter which one. And we want to slam these into each other and they should crumple similar amounts because they are similar vehicles. The only difference is the one I made is on stilts where this one actually has reasonable ground clearance. Mine's faster though, somehow, even though it has terrible handling. At least I hope it's faster because it has such a big engine in it. All right, now, can we take a look at this damage? They're stuck together, but I think we might be able to back it out or separate it or pull it or something. Let's see, pulling it, not the bumper, the vehicle. Oh, they are really stuck together. Okay, well, what we can do then is we can save this one and then we can load it up and now we can take a good look at this thing without the other car being in the way. So this thing got destroyed all the way a little bit past the wheels to where the engine block is. And this one's actually not that much different because you see that red peeking through? That's the engine block. So it's actually pretty similar. My might have held up a little bit better just because of the fact that it sits up higher. So the way it hit it, it hit it more on the frame versus the body. And in terms of drivability, we got drivability here. Got so much drivability, we're going to crash into that guy in another 100 mile per hour impact. And I don't think it really changed too much, actually. I'm looking at these, and they're both pretty similarly deformed to the start, although now I'm assuming mine probably wouldn't drive so well. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on to a new map, but we're going to be heading over to Grid Map for some suspension tests. I expect this vehicle to do really, really poorly at the suspension test, though, because I tuned the suspension based on what automation was telling me, not based on actual drivability here. We should have more than enough ground clearance to be able to just drive over these things, right? Oh yeah, look at that. Ground clearance is fine. The real test is going to be how does the suspension react to the bumps? Because look, we can drive right over this thing at slow speeds. No problem. Look at all that ground clearance right there. Except for the mirror, we got a few inches of ground clearance and it shouldn't be an issue. But I want to do this at a higher speed because I think that'll be more interesting. So we're going to reset this and then here we go. Full speed at this thing and let's see what it does. First impact. I'm expecting this thing to flip. Whoa. Oh my goodness. 
the whole suspension like kicked up so hard it looked like it was stance for a second and we're basically flying across this thing with no wheels on the ground like 60 percent of the time it seems like back ends way up in the air can we control it somehow it's actually remaining in control i don't know how but it made it through and it's even still somewhat drivable let's see is it even driving straight no it is definitely pulling to the left that's a certain fact it's pulling badly to the left what if we try the smaller suspension test though how will it fare there maybe it'll do a little bit better here oh wow look at that that is beautiful that is so smooth like that is magnificent the body of the vehicle doesn't even look like it was moving as we went over that and you can see the springs and the suspension moving as we did it oh my goodness that was beautiful you gotta rewind that and watch that again that was amazing Otherwise, though, here's a crash. We're going to smack it on the roof a little bit. Well, mostly on the front after all. I thought I was going to hit the roof, but the way it rolled in the air kind of got it hit awkwardly. Give you one more second to look at it, then reset. And let's try doing some jump testing. We're going to start with the middle jump over here. And if it does okay on that, we'll try the big jump. So how will it do? That's a good speed. That's a decent landing, but oh my goodness, it's bouncing all over the place. I'm trying for another jump already. Oh, wow. That that has actually took a lot of effort to keep that thing going in a straight line. Like, you might not be able to tell, but I was really being super careful with my inputs to do that. So now, this one, I don't think it's going to stand a chance. Yeah, that's rolling over no matter what after we took off after that ramp because it was driving so crooked, I couldn't get it straight lined up for the ramp. And it does a good job of just rolling after the jumps. I guess because it has a high center of gravity, it makes it easier to just roll around more. Although, then it has a low center of gravity when it's flipped over, though. And somehow it's driving straight. I don't know how, but it was driving perfectly straight when it wasn't earlier. Although now it isn't. After I steered a little bit, I broke it. I don't know how that happens. All right, whatever. We're done with that one. Time for the big jump. Only problem is I have no idea how fast we need to go here. So full speed it is. We'll just see what full speed does. It's probably going to be pretty level looking. That's good, good, good. Level and stance. But at what cost was that stancing? Well, the suspension is probably blown out in both the front and the rear because that was a hard impact. Let's see if it is even able to keep on driving straight at all. Oh, I did not see that coming. I was too busy looking at the suspension to look at the ramp that we slammed into. But surprisingly, the suspension actually held up a little bit better than I thought. This side it almost looks hatchback-ish. This side still looks like a crossover. Thank goodness. Can you imagine how disappointed you would be if you got a crossover and it turned into a hatchback just because you took it over a big jump? And I did plan to do another suspension test, but I'm curious. How will it perform on this one? Is it going to be as smooth as the other one? Uh, yeah, actually, it's doing pretty good. Oh, and so, see, it's really good until it gets disrupted. Once it gets disrupted, it all, all over the place, bouncing and just flipping. It made it through, sure, but it was not comfortable. The first half was very comfortable. Ooh, that was actually a pretty good landing to try to get minimal damage, and I wasn't even trying. I was just letting it fly through the air. All right, let's go ahead and finish this up with the classics. We're going to go to Brutal Slope, and we'll follow it up with a Leap of Death afterwards. And Brutal Slope, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to drive this thing backwards. Usually, I drive the truck backwards. I want to drive this thing backwards so I can see if we slam on the brakes, does the rear, like, dip at all, or is the suspension so stiff it pretty much stays completely stationary? So let's see. Eh? Yeah, it's pretty firm. It dipped a tiny, tiny bit, but... For a car that's supposed to be kind of like a luxury sports car, you probably want it to dip a little bit more for comfort. Because I think there's a little bit more emphasis on luxury when you have a crossover versus sport. Like the sport trim exists just because they make a ton of money on it probably. You know, they put an engine in that's a little bit more expensive than the normal one, but then they charge you a ton more for that. And then for maintenance, they charge you even more because it's a tight engine bay. At least that's what automation told me. So anyways... Slow-mo engaged, and here is the impact. We want to make sure we separate the camera from the vehicle before it freaks out. And that thing is actually held up a lot better than I expected. Wow, look at that. Like, we still got half a vehicle. That's mighty impressive. You know what I'm thinking is maybe the frame on this thing is just really, really strong, and then the body panels are about the expected strength. So when you have something that actually tries to damage the frame, it holds up. Oh, look at this. Whoa, it looks like a 2D car or something. That is a trip. That just looks so weird. I can't get over this. Like you look at it from that side and you look at it from this side. You would, you would never expect it to look like that because it looks like just the front's a little damaged, not obliterated to bits. Anyways, 
finishing it up with a good old leap of death. And this could actually be one of those one, two, three impact jumps. We have a ton of power and all wheel drive, which will help us put the power down in the dirt, which is often a problem. And then it has a really stiff frame as we saw earlier. So that might make it be more bouncy. So after the first crash, it might fly farther than most vehicles will. So for this first one, we're going to do some slow-mo. And then if I feel like it, we'll do another one without slow-mo. It's actually going really good for distance so far. Can we clear this? Can we clear it? It's going to be close. Nope, nope. We're not going to clear it. We're going to make impact. And this is a hard impact. This is not the kind of impact you want for one of those uh, two, three impact runs. This is the ones you want when you want the car unbelievably destroyed in one impact. And the rest of it kind of slowly bounces down. Because it just came straight down. It didn't like bounce off of it or anything. All the force was absorbed by the car and it crunched. I don't even know if it's going to be worth watching it go down the rest of the way. Because I don't think it can get much more damage than what it looks like right now. I mean, maybe we could bend the frame a little bit. But I think we need to be going faster than what we're going to go. We're going pretty slow as you're seeing. We're like just going boop, boop, boop. Like I'm not even counting how many impacts this is. Because I know it's a lot. Especially right here where you're kind of bouncing between left and right. Yeah. I ain't counting all those dots. No, no, no. You can count those if you want. Sure. I'm not going to. I'm just curious. Will it make it all the way to the bottom? And the answer looks like it's going to be, yeah, it's probably going to make it all the way to the bottom unless it gets stuck in a weird way. And maybe like, come on, come on. Perfect. Into the water. That thing did hold up pretty well, though. Although I really want to try it again. I want to try to see if we can do one of the two impact, maybe even a one impact run with this thing. I have a feeling it can do it. We just got to make sure we have it level when it makes that first impact level with whatever terrain it's hitting so if we get just an inch or two farther we'll be able to like glide down the hill and that's how you really go far and I have to like use the brakes right here to make sure it's level that's right there we go that shoots you forward like a second ramp and it might actually just go all the way yep I love my one hits those are my favorite ones because it's like it takes a little bit of skill to line it up like that as you saw from the last one. Anyways, that'll do it for this video. I don't have a name for this vehicle, so if you guys have any good name suggestions, do leave them and maybe I'll use it. And until next time, this is YBR. I'll see ya. Also, look how little damage this thing had. Pretty impressive.